Well, this drawer shows all the lower, well, not all the lower Kimmage clay ammonites we got, but some of them. And a lot of them you can see are slightly nacreous. All from the clays. So these are from inland sites from active, well, in those days, working quarries. So this is the time when you can get this material without it being sort of destroyed by the elements. Because as soon as it gets exposed to the atmosphere, it starts to degrade very, very quickly. Um, so some of these are, as I say, brilliant preserved. You've got that slight nacre on the inner shell. That's got a little lappet there. Told you it's a sort of male one. Um, all sorts of sizes, but all sorts of preservation. You can see that lovely iridescent sort of colour on that one. And sometimes they're even more vivid, but of course when it gets exposed to oxygen, it starts to discolour slightly, but these are not too bad. Um, some in little hard sort of nodules that we get from the lower Kimmage clay, so you break these nodules open. These are the base of the Kimmage clay, and these so-called ammonites called pseudo, uh, what's it, pseudo, not pseudo gravesia, oh, pseudo pictonia or something like that, but they're, they're, they're quite nice, okay. Um, we also get these other little tiny, these are very diagnostic ammonite there. You can see this very, very small ammonite with this long lappet. It's called Sutnera and certain levels we find those. So when we find those from different um, localities, we know we're on the same sort of ammonite zone. So preservation wise, they're, as I say, they're not that great, um, but they're quite, as I say, they're quite sort of stunning with the sort of colors. And then from the, sh the near shore, deposits from the lower chemist clay we get some crushed ammonites like these with show really well defined sort of um, preservation you can see this lovely lappet and the growth lines actually in the in that lappet and they're all on male ammonites so that would swim along that way now what the lappet's there for it must be something to do with mating but we're not really sure but that's a beautiful one and there's another one here slightly different species you can see with the shorter lappets but preservation wise you've got everything in it except it's crushed and you can even see along the venter you can see the ribbon both sides and that very smooth venter there which tells you it's an alica stephanus ammonite okay so there's a lot of um work still to be done on some of these things um but as i say some of them are extremely small this is another one you probably Little, these two come from the specific level in the lower chemist clay and they're called cardioceros but again preservation wise they're not that as a collector you probably wouldn't collect those they're not that stunning but scientifically they're from a level we need we need these for a reference sort of collection of the people who are doing studies on ammonites and we got all the relevant information from the locality and the levels they sort of come from so and then we get some what have we got some big uh, the bigger ammonites again all from the lower Kimmage clay or these two are not those two um, they're from what we call the resina zone so that's a female big macroconch ammonite and so is this one here the nalica stephanus here but you can see here this is all sort of cracked it's all crushed down so the body chamber has been filled with sediment and it's as it was in life and the rest of it the fragma cone where it's all filled with a certain amount of uh, liquid and and air that's crushed down because it never been sort of mineralized or any sediment infilled those voids okay so this these are microconch ammonites the male ammonites from the upper kimmage clay and they're defined with not a lappet but they got a horn and you see that's an extremely long one again there so we've, we've got a quite a variety so as we go through the sediments and go higher and higher and higher they do gr gradually change through sort of time uh, again, every one of them's crushed. And I think they were doing the M42 motorway and there were some uncrushed ones from there that are actually in a collection up in, in Humberside. But we've never collected any uncrushed sort of um, microcon ammonites from here. But they're the males. So if we look at those and then go to the females, you can see the size difference. So the females are much, much bigger. They've got to lay the eggs and do the most important job. So you can see the sort of size difference between the males and the females. Um, and some, again, we get preserved semi sort of 3D. You see these are crushed down flat, but all pyritic. And they came from actually, as Abingdon, there was a concentration of these at one particular level of thousands of these ammonites. 
but then we get some more here so you can see the, the size range again from the females okay and then sometimes we come up against some really rare ammonites in the Kimbridge clay these are all Gravesia okay or Gravesia the pr proper name for them and they were referred to in one of the monographs on um, Kimbridge clay ammonites as being extremely rare there was only three partial specimens well I can tell you now through sustained collecting they're very common and they do range through quite a quite a way so they're from the base of the sort of ammonite zone from the lower Kimbridge clay you can see how highly really rid they're sort of evil they're really fat ammonites but this one is way up um, and you can see it's slightly changed and become very much smoother okay and then we get these other ones um, called pseudo gravesia they look the same the same sort of ribbon as those but you can see that's a male because you can see it's got the lappet here and that's the first one i think that's known as pseudo gravesia with a lappet because on the continent most of these are limestone casts which are uncrushed but it doesn't keep that sort of wet that very fragile lappet okay and to complement that is the female you can see so there's the female of that species so that's the first female we've got from the Kim region and although they don't look very photogenic you can see they're all pseudo gravesia and that one's slightly uncrushed you can see actually the inside the sort of body chamber it's not crushed down that flat and a lot of them are you see this one it's pretty horrific thing but what the reason it's been collected is the fact that it's from a specific level and we need to know those ranges um, how how far they range up through and what how they change through sort of time so although they're not a collector sort of best thing in some ways they're very very useful and then we get 3d ammonites so again these are from what we call the weymouth nodules where you do get 3D ammonites. So these are from again from the lower chemist clay, but you can see they're all calcite. The, the, a lot of the body chambers are missing, but you can see the preservation is exquisite. Um, and some of them are semi crushed. Again, you can see that one, but again, it's got the lappet preserved. Um, and really, really nice preservation in these limestone nodules. They're becoming harder and harder to find because more and more people are sort of collecting and I think um, we're losing that thing. And from Kimridge as well, these are from Weymouth, but the Kim Kimridge you get same sort but prioritised in the same sort of nodules. But again, they're, they're reasonably uncommon. What else? And again, another one from Kimridge, slightly different species, you can see that, but again, um, in its hard pirated nodules. And then just to complement that, what else have we got? There's another one here. Um, um, um. Here. So again, this is from a nodule from uh, Kimmage clay of Kimmage. There's another species of ammonite called um, Subdichotomosphorus. And that was prepped out of this horrible pyrite and it took months to do. But you can see the preservation is not bad. It's got, still got the shell on it. Okay. And then again, from Weymouth, 3D ones preserved. So that's quite a nice one, semi-crushed, but again, this is from Weymouth, calcite, Alicus Stephanus, macrocon. And then very occasionally we get these nautiloids, but this is from the Kimmage clay, but this is from actually France. Uh, this is from the Cymodoce zone, but again, we d we've not found them. Um, except in the base of our lower Kimmage clay. Same type with this flattened section on there. And if you really want to be, because um, people really find these as like, they look like little cat's paws, but these are actually the inner parts of the fragma cone that have been infilled with sediment, because normally they would be hollow, but it's been filled. And you can see the very complex sutures that form those separate chambers and you can see the separate elements there okay over and out that's all we've got for you today from the etches collection thank you so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe for more and hopefully we'll see you next time